Okay, we will uh, again proceed with uh, the design of breakwaters. I will just uh, explain about the design principles. The first and foremost uh, requirement is uh, the assessment of the weight of the stone that it needs to be used for the armor layer. Once this, that is done, the rest of the things are automatic in the sense you need to use some kind of a, a ratio for the secondary layer. Uh, core layer etcetera ratio of the weight of the stone which you have determined for the primary layer. So here the weight of the stone individual armor unit in maybe newtons so is given by this expression where wr is a unit weight of uh, uh, the armor unit uh, then uh, h is the design wave height which I have already explained to you how to uh, look at the design wave height, how to select the design wave height. Then the specific SR is the specific gravity of the R main unit related to the sea water. So that is WR by WW. Then WW is uh, your unit weight of water, I mean the sea water. Then uh, you have the angle of the structure slope. So this is the sloping slope of the uh, breakwater. Then KD is the stability coefficient which depends on the type of armor block, the number of layers, uh, n type of placement whether uh, uh, type of placement whether it can be random or in a regular fa fashion I will explain about that later. Then type of waves that is whether it is breaking or non breaking. The KD value for both trunk and head section of the breakwaters are quite different and are provided in the table in the next slide. So before that. So number of layers I have already explained in the previous lecture, the type of placement see for example if you look at some of the stones like tetrapods this can be placed in random. The only requirement is that it has to be placed in two layers but you can just simply place it. But if you look at the acropod so you cannot place this in a random it has to be it has a regular way a specific way of placing the uh, armor unit and it is a single layer. So if you do not follow the uh, uh, procedure laid down for placing the acropod we are in for trouble. So, so normally uh, so it is up to the individuals or the uh, uh, people who want to have the breakwater whether they want to go in for tetrapod or acropod. So there are a wide number of a wide number of parameters which need to be looked into for allowing you or for deciding on which armor unit you would like to use. Suppose if you want to have an acropod unit to be placed again in an island then it becomes a problem because you need to have a skilled labor skilled I mean a sophisticated constructional equipments and maybe someone who is quite experienced in placing procedures etc. So in such cases the usage of acropod may be a questionable I am not a single I am not singling out I mean not I am, I am not try, trying to discard acropod any layer any armor unit which has a specified method of placing has to be carefully looked into if you are planning for a uh, remote area for breakwaters okay whereas uh, the rubble mound or natural rock natural rock or even the uh, uh, tetrapod is just you need to know how it has to be fabricated then it is just going and putting it uh, only thing is only guideline is that it has to be laid in two layers. So this is very important so you, and uh, as I said earlier you have the trunk and uh, the head. So trunk portion normally the waves are approaching this uh, uh, trunk like this whereas here the head is approached like this the waves from all the directions. So you have a flatter slope which I have already explained. So when you have a flatter slope naturally what will happen see look at the uh, where the breakwater slope is coming here called alpha right. So if the slope is flatter slope flatter what happens? slope is fatter you the weight stone can be smaller okay the weight can be less 
and vice versa. If you want to have a steep slope, the weight has to be more. Okay, so these are some of the guidelines which you need to have in mind. So, so if you have a, a where in a location where you don't have a, you have moderate size of rocks, then and you would like to make use of those rocks, then probably you can think of going in for a flatter slope. So these are all some of the options which need to be considered when you are in the planning stage of thing. So you have Armour unit, Hudson's formula and Van der Meer's formula. So wherein here, in this case, I have shown the expression for weight. So here it is mass. So I am putting here mass, and KD is a usual thing, and then. This is the relative density under water, so this is given by this. So this is what uh, you have. So in the case of Van der Meer formula, so what he has uh, done is he has considered the type of breaking also into account. So I suggest uh, that you refer to some of the uh, books like the Coastal Engineering Manual, etc., for other details. I'm just giving only a, a kind of an introduction, introduction to this. Van der Meer formula can be used for uh, where situations where your breakwaters are filled with the rocks are formed by rocks. So in such case you have two uh, uh, equation uh, two uh, equations or expressions for the stability number which is given as your for plunging breaker this is what you will have uh, for the stability number and then uh, this is the for the surging breakers. What will happen is uh, see PB is an overall porosity of the a uh, breakwater pb equal to 0.1 for an armor layer over an impermeable layer pb equal to 0.4 for armor layer over the filter layer over the core course then the finally you have for a structure built entirely out of a, a armor stones just dumping the stones no core no secondary layer nothing else. so you have for a wide range of choices you have the stability number slightly changing so here in this case this surf similarity parameter we have already seen that surf similarity parameter is nothing but tan beta that is the slope of the structure divided by square root of okay. So which means that in the stability number in the earlier case you see that there is no wave height wave period coming into picture at all in the Hudson's formula but in the Van der Meer's formula this is accounted for that is the wave period is accounted for that is a major difference between the Hudson's formula and the uh, uh, Van der Meer's formula. So then uh, uh, you can also consider in this the number of waves. So num number of waves normally when you use for uh, usually they consider for as for 1000 waves. So what does that mean that is cumulative effect or cumulative action of about 1000 waves what is the status of the breakwater it is very easy in the lab. You have a, a breakwater formed by this procedure, you have arrived at the weight etc. you have formed the breakwater. You have a wave maker at one end then you set the wave maker for a particular period for which it has to be tested. Then subject the model for about 1000 waves, look at the stability the status of the structure. If the status of the structure is intact then we say that the structure is safe, stable. So the number of waves normally should be taken as 1000. For details please refer to the standard books as I have said earlier. Now looking at the suggested KD values there are some of the new types of latest, uh, uh, latest armor stone stones which might be uh, 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 which now might not be appearing here. So this is uh, from the old shore protection manual where you have the armor units this is the number of layers. So this is the type of placement whether it is a, a random or a, a special type for example uh, acropod is not there. So acropod uh, I think uh, you have to check into uh, the literature for acropod and then uh, you use uh, the trunk structure head and uh, for the uh, structure trunk and structure head the KD values for if you want to consider the breaking waves these are the KD values 
and these are the KD values for non-breaking waves and uh, similarly for the structure and uh, see for all these things all this rho is for a particular slope of the breakwater okay. So you need to know the uh, slope and then you need to know whether you are designing it for break breaking waves or non-breaking waves. For non-breaking waves naturally your <coughs> KD value is more okay. Now once you have decided the uh, weight of the stone then weight of the underlying units are can be calculated for example for the weight of the core the weight can be varying between uh, W by 200 to W by 4000 whereas the weight of the individual unit for tow can be tow can be around uh, W by 10 and then uh, weight of the secondary layer W by 10 to W by 15. W is the weight of the armor unit obtained from Arsene's formula. Is that clear? So that is what I said once you calculate your weight of the stone then it is all quite straightforward. The filter layer can be DN50 for the armor layer divided by the under layer or the secondary layer. This ratio should be between 2 to 2.2 to 2.3 these are all the guidelines which you need to take care. Now calculation of uh, 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 the different other parameters for example the crest width. The crest width of the breakwater usually for uh, commercial harbors it is taken as 8 meters and for fishing harbors etc. Uh, minor ports they, they go in for about 4 to 5 meters. So this is a general guideline which you can use but the breakwater uh, width can be calculated as shown here where n is equal to uh, 3 is recommended minimum uh, l is uh, k delta is the layer coefficient which we will see later and then w is the armor layer weight and then this is the mass density of the armor unit. So <coughs> tow for the tow the width of the tow can be again calculated as shown here for the uh, for the tow width and n equal to tow uh, 2 for the tow height the same procedure used so you can calculate the tow width. So in general the tow width is kept as at least 3 meters okay. So this uh, uh, this uh, layer coefficient can be obtained from this uh, uh, table where uh, you have the different cases where you have the different types of armor unit then the number of uh, layers then uh, placement method then this is the layer coefficient which is provided here and then the percentage of I mean the porosity in percentage is also given uh, in the last column that would give you an idea concerning what is the kind of uh, uh, porosity you may expect when you use the different uh, types of armor units okay. The most widely adopted uh, stones are quarry stones, dolos, tetrapods. Uh, then cubes, um, then uh, core lock, uh, then uh, core lock. I think the, the mostly these things, and I think you should look into the literature. So crest elevation. So uh, you understood the, the crest width and the toe width. There are some guidelines which you need to follow, and using all these factors are. Uh, have been discussed so you have to calmly design the breakwater cross section. So concerning the run up calculation run up calculations are made using the graphs as shown in the subsequent slides. So it has to be it is calculated based on H by GT's GT and D by H. So So obtain a correction factor for a given slope that is some uh, uh, this one and then run up is uh, actual run up see for example you get in, you interpolate from the graph 1 to 3 to obtain R by H okay. So for a particular slope and this one so slope is fixed and for a particular value of uh, these values you calculate your uh, run up and then finally what you do is you get the uh, run up value but uh, 
uh, <coughs> you adopt a, a correction factor k and then you have to add up the mean uh, the maximum highest high water maximum high water highest high water plus the run up as per the calculation plus a storm surge storm surge may be 1 meter or it depends on the site 1 meter 0.5 meters or whatever it is and then you have to include what is the maximum high highest high water so this is very important to decide whether you are going to decide it uh, design it as a, a overtopping structure or a non overtopping structure so here is it is so the wave run up for smooth impermeable slopes are given here slope is given here so this is the h by gt square so this is a, a r by h h square h not prime so you can use this value so you calculate this parameter and you know the slope so you can get this value okay so then a smooth and impermeable slope for 1 is to 10 and then smooth and wave run up for uh, on smooth and impermeable slope for this factor ds by h0 equal to 2 and uh, i suggest uh, there is one manual which is called as eurotop manual which is exclusively for overtopping and wave run up so if you try to google it for this you have a manual available you can freely download which gives the latest informations about on this important aspect okay so i don't want to go into the details of wave run up because so many uh, there is a major european uh, project that was uh, uh, carried out to for th considering these two aspects so i suggest you have a look at it so you also once you calculate the run up from that then use the, the for a particular slope you can get the correction factor which has to be multiplied by the run up which you have evaluated based on uh, uh, the earlier figures and that run up has to be added to the maximum highest high water line or high water plus the storm surge that gives you the crest elevation so so this is the msl so maybe this is the run up under msl okay but then you have to add your uh, st maximum high water line and then you have to add the storm surge in order to get the crest elevation so this is actually we have already seen the different kinds of layers so this is based on acropod so you have a secondary layer i mean a core layer a secondary layer and the primary layer wherein in the case of an acropod it is only by a single layer so there is only one single layer which is which is used to form the so you see only one stone is there okay and <coughs> what we have also done some uh, test with the acropod the acropod is quite stable see this artificial armor units they have a very good interlocking capacity when they are put together so for example this has a very good interlocking capacity but uh, it has a, a regular uh, placing method that is a slight disadvantage but uh, the and, and, and another uh, problem with acropod it's not a it's not a problem it's a feature the another feature is the surface is not that rough as compared to a tetrapod so when we did the experiments with tetrapod and acropod in the department we found that acropod has has slightly more reflection okay uh, sorry uh, less reflection and then uh, it has slightly more overtopping uh, because when you have the tetrapod it is uh, placed in random so a lot of friction is offered so the reflection is less and so the overtopping also naturally has to be less and we found that it is to be less in the case of tetrapods so this uh, i am showing this this is another uh, type where uh, you used uh, uh, dolos dolos is uh, uh, you refer to the earlier picture how it looks like so dolos is uh, uh, shown here 
So, uh, uh, just give me a second. So I forgot to bring a model. Okay, so maybe I show you the models uh, later. So I, I had the Hudson's formula. Let me have a, a kind of a commentary on uh, the Hudson's formula because Hudson's formula is widely used. Okay, so although it doesn't consider the wave period, but still it is widely used, uh, and it incorporates all the other uh, different uh, uh, artificial harmony units also. So you see that uh, it has uh, some uh, uh, limitations. So for th that is one with respect to the uh, the slope. Okay, then the, the wave period is not considered. The water depth at the toe at the toe, if it is uh, greater than uh, 1.5 h, then the crest elevation should be higher than the uh, run up. That is for sure. Independent, so it doesn't consider the storm duration, and finally, no friction is regarded. It is, it doesn't consider the friction either. So, but it's an empirical formula, but still it is widely used. But people say that it is giving a slightly overestimate for the weight of the storm. Okay, but then you can also argue whether the wave height. We are not using the maximum wave height. We are using only the significant wave height. So there are some kind of a discussion going on even now. But still, uh, in spite of all these things, we still go use the Hudson's formula, and uh, so it's not possible to give a definite KD value due to reasons because KD value is there in the Hudson's formula. But you you, you have to have a, uh, the KD value which have will have to depend on the interlocking between between the armor units, between the layers, then function type of the armor unit, type and type of structure, slope and extent of armor layer and then degree of acceptable damage see normally the acceptable damage you can have a damage up to 5 percent I will come to that later okay, when we look at the uh, physical uh, modeling of break orders. So for example in the case of a uh, uh, cube percentage of damage if it is 0 0.5 the KD, uh, KD will be uh, no, no if the percentage damage is 5 then the KD value can be up to 14. So the toe protection is extremely important and uh, I will just move on to the next slide which shows the toe protection. Toe protection remains stable under wave action and load from armor unit follow changes uh, in the bottom profile that is due to longshore current it has to take care of that because it is there can uh, be some changes near the uh, toe uh, near the tip of the breakwater. There are two types of toe protections and one is the exposed toe and another is the excavated toe. So this is the conventional excavated toe that is the dig remove the sand and then build it as shown here. So as you can see here they build the whole thing and then these are the with n equal to for toe width and n equal to 2 for toe height as I have discussed earlier. So this is the primary layer so you can run the uh, filter layer and then you can use uh, the secondary layer can be run into this and this can also be just the primary layer stone itself can be extended or you can use slightly less but uh, the uh, the width is for sure it has to be a minimum of 3 meters minimum barest minimum uh, many locations they use 6 meters. So this is uh, 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 without any excavation. So wherein uh, you have the <coughs> you have the primary layer, then uh, the filter layer extended, then you you have uh, stones of either the primary layer or something in between the primary layer and the secondary layer, and again here the toe is, uh, has to be about six meters. But you have a conventional method of calculating the toe height and the toe uh, width. Is that clear? So Rubbleman cross section uh, for seaward wave exposure for 0 to moderate overtopping. So this is to summarize what we have uh, uh, done so far. So this is uh, maybe the WS to W15. So this is W that is the armor layer or sometimes this is not this is not considered this is uh, all these things can be considered as uh, W and this can all be considered as W by 2 instead of just this alone you can also consider this uh, as 
w by 2 provided but here you see that there is a, uh, with 0 to moderate overtopping suppose if you allow moderate overtopping then there may be some uh, problem here and that is the reason why you have uh, the w itself extending uh, at least for certain distance on the lee side okay if there is no overtopping allowed then you can still replace this uh, darker one the entire thing by w by even w by 2 okay but not, but not w by 10 w by 10 if you want to have then it has to be far below because when the waves fall onto this it this is the area which is quite important that is the distance of about a minus h minus the wave height from the still water line so if this if this height is approximately up to this is one wave height then you can have beyond this w by 10 that gives you an idea that beyond that the overtopping cannot may not have much of effect you understand so once you design it it's always better you check with physical modeling before you go into the field and uh, the core layer also worked out all these uh, things are uh, all these uh, details are given in this next uh, this is the rubble mount structure zero to uh, recommended this is three layer structure this is another typical cross section where you can use this as a base for your design of your breakwater. So as I said I have already indicated you how to calculate W that is what is very important because if you look at the cross section it's just you need to draw a picture but only thing is you need to have the weight of the stone that is the only thing which is very important. So looking at the figure you can make the whole thing on your own okay is that clear. And this is again for moderate overdropping and this needs a lot of experience also because there are when do you consider the overtopping when do you do not know it also depends on the importance of the project. See certain projects you do not need to have you should not have even a small degree of overtopping a certain thing is significant overtopping can be allowed for example there are some reef breakwaters. <laughs> It, it will always be submerged. So all these things uh, you have to look into the details uh, in uh, some selected reference which are given at the end of the lecture. So this is again uh, with moderate overtopping uh, rubble mound uh, wave exposure. So all these things uh, there are different types of uh, combinations which you can think of using. Again for uh, the although the uh, Hudson's formula is widely used in the design of uh, breakwaters a variety of formulas are available in literature. A list of formulas used are given here. So this was this has been used in Spain. So this is used in United States. This has been used in France, Sweden, Norway, Soviet Union. So so many formulas are there. So it's all available in the lecture material. You can have a look if you are really interested in knowing more about the formulas. Then you have the violent. Uh, so this picture just shows uh, Chennai Harbor, Outer Ham, uh, during one of the uh, cyclones. Where uh, during late uh, 2003, you uh, the kind of uh, overtopping, and uh, so usually there is not much of overtopping, but during a cyclone, you see what can happen. So in fact, uh, the wave reached till the top of this uh, tower, I believe, but nothing happened. It's all intact. So with that, I complete. Uh, the breakwater studies